Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy. I'm out here living life. I'm busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Making moves and catching flights. So please don't waste my time. I'm busy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. I am, of course, your host, Head Honcho, Vegan Chorizo Poppy, founder of BNB, aka the bald nigga bombshell in your headphones, in your speaker, in the podcast studio. Also go by Chinedu and the only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie. So happy to be back. Obviously, we had the week off. Um, really enjoyed that. I completely unplugged from life, all the pop culture bullshit. My Slack was on pause. My emails, I ain't checked no damn emails. Texas was a blast. I'll, I'll tell y'all when uh, our our co-hosts are back because they're out right now. Uh, now, I would feel like Will at the end of the Fresh Prince show when he was standing in the living room by himself, but I have an incredible guest with me who I will get to in a minute. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel for all visual episodes. Um, make sure you subscribe to your favorite audio streaming platform. Like, comment, share, all that good stuff that you can do on all those platforms. We really appreciate it. Make sure that you tell a friend about one of the best damn podcasts in the world. Um, our pa- our podcast only fans, Patreon. Hit patreon.com backslash staybusypod for all of our unfiltered, unhinged raw episodes where we get into it all our latest episode the rat race is out now where we talk about our careers we talk about what we would be doing if we weren't doing music um and just a bunch of different things i thought it was a really good conversation and i personally got out a lot of feelings that i'm holding in but all that is done i got to get to the reason we are here someone who i'm very excited to have with me someone who's wanted to come on the show for quite some time as well and i'm glad we're finally able to make it happen uh he's from the era with Truies, BBs, and Canes. This rapper represents Harlem to the fullest, claiming that God is from Harlem and Harlem is heaven. Having tasted the food and seeing the women there, I, I would have to agree. Uh, I first got hip to this guy several years ago um, due to his hilarious flip of Fantasia's When I See You titled It's Niki. And you just have to hear it to understand the vibes of that song. But if you were outside this summer and you was wilding out, not answering texts, ruining people's lives and it's sneaky probably relates to you um but it's been a pleasure to watch this guy's journey whether he's blazing stages or destroying ciphers this is an artist that you meet and hear once and you simply can never forget he's harlem shaking into the busy verse none other than my guy fergie baby welcome brother welcome <gasps> thank you for having me you know what's going on thank these you. claps feel so sad when it's just me <laughs> <laughs> clap, clap, with you. clap for us yeah clap for us you are i appreciate thank you though. thank you the room is full gang is here uh-huh, siobhan is here i miss siobhan good to see you siobhan joe all the, all, all the guys here good Ooh, to see y'all no lack. but my guy welcome man thank you so much for having me how man. are you I'm good. I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed, yo. I, that's the only word I could tell you right now. You've been blessed. It's been it's been a good couple months mm-hmm. for you. It's been yeah. It's a lot about to happen. Yeah, so there we you go. Know what I'm saying. I so, love it. Yeah, I feel good. How you feeling? I'm good. Thank you for that's asking. I yeah, appreciate for, that. For Can't sure, complain. Sure. How, how's your weekend? What'd you do this weekend? Fashion week. Okay. Ripping and running. He's outside. I'm, you see me. I'm right now. I'm tired. Yeah, drip, drip, <laughs> dripped up. Dripped yeah, up. Yeah. I mean, shout out to Minimal on the radar. They got me, you know, vibed out right now and all mm-hmm. that. But yeah, I just been ripping and running. You know, just networking. Fashion week. You know, getting in tune with, with, with the what's going on right now. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's really it. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. Um, so let's jump right into it. We got a lot to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, first, some very unfortunate news um, within music lately. We lost both Fat Man Scoop. And Rich Homie Kwan. Starting yeah. with Fat Man Scoop, I mean, to me, he's just got one of the most, like, recognizable voices, like, ever. Yeah. Like, any party you went to in the 2000s, you was hearing him, whether it was on Lose Control or, um, I mean, those are just a bunch of songs that, like, you can't even really, like, I, I could name them, but yeah. it's just it's just a lot. And I know he, like, collapsed on stage. Then we found out the very next day that he was gone. Um, and I think that's been, like, the toughest thing about getting older. Um, health. Yeah, health, health, absolutely. Sure. And I think that's probably, our, our parents probably went through it and their parents went through it where like people who were important to your life when you were younger, yeah. you, you get older, they get older too. And you don't, you don't think about that. And then you just hear like someone who was really important 
in the culture. Yeah, it's gone. Man. It was that was that, that was tough. That was tough. Yeah. You know, he's an undeniable presence, um, especially for the hip hop culture. And it was Fat Man, man. He, yeah, man. he wasn't a, he wasn't really a rapper, but he, mm. he turned it up. Yeah. He, he was the hip hop culture for real. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? So it was unfortunate. It was a sad day. And I like I I definitely that was one of the people I wanted to work with too. So mm. it was tough, but I know we hurting as 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 a hip hop culture, so glow in peace to him. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Glow in peace to my man K Shakes too. Facts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Word, K Shakes. Word. Rich yeah. homie Kwan. Rich That's homie. another one. Yeah. I think if Fat Man Scoop was like one of the voices that I think about from childhood, Rich Homie Kwan was college for me. Like, yeah. walk through different generation lifestyle, yeah. him and Thug, everything him and Thug were doing. Like, you know, I, I, you tough. can you can go to the obvious artists like the Drakes and the Coles who soundtracked college, but Rich Homie Kwan and Migos, for example, those were crazy. Bro, they like, started it up. Yeah, like if you know, you know. Like, yeah, it was it was, it was a unfortunate time for hip hop this past week or two. So. Yeah. You know, we're going to keep the culture forward and, mm -hmm. you know, we always going to praise them and, you know, for leading this red carpet out. But it's up, though. Absolutely. Like, go in peace to the all of them that we just named. You feel me? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. For sure. Fortunately, the, uh, you know, we got to move on. But yeah, <laughs> while there were things that we were mourning within hip hop, there mm -hmm. were also some just a lot of different controversial topics and all that. Um, so I'm sure, sure you saw a couple weeks ago, Travis Scott dropped Days Before Rodeo. Yeah. When he re-released it, 10-year okay. anniversary yeah, project. Yeah. Um, and that was, you know, that's exciting for people. Like, it's cool to get music that you had on whatever, um, on streaming. You know, just, right. just the convenience of it. And then over time, we started realizing, like, Travis is really trying to push this as if it's an album. Like, the bundles, the Smart bonus though. songs, Smart. the vinyls. Of course, business-wise, yeah. you know, do what you got to do, m make your money. Um, and this was the same week that Sabrina Carpenter, my new pop obsession, <laughs> dropped her album. Yeah, she's been on the sweet. charts, have you? She's cooking. She's What's cooking. that song she got that's going crazy? Uh, she got Please, Please, Please. She no, got, it's another uh, one. Espresso? Espresso. Espresso. Yeah, yeah, That's a banger. Yeah, yeah, that's a banger. Yeah, yeah. I'm she's working wild, late. <laughs> 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 she nice, bro. She nice. I ain't like, tapping yet, If you haven't listened to the album, check out her name on the charts, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She So she was projected to get the number one. And then Travis, out of nowhere, was projected to do like, 280 she was projected like 300 and then it became like this neck and neck race and it happened around labor day weekend so the charting numbers came out because obviously labor day that monday holiday mm. they're not putting them out so they come out the next day and there's this whole conversation of yo like who's gonna get the number one who's gonna get the number one sabrina ends up getting it she beats him by 1k i seen that which is like nuts I seen like that. really nuts because when travis started like applying pressure with all his bonuses and stuff. She put out a bonus record and she even invoked the barb saying like, this one's for Nikki. Um, knowing the history of mm. Nikki and Travis battling in 2018 when Asteroid and Queen dropped. So it just became this whole thing. Um, and business wise, I get it. Um, but I think it's just interesting when you look at the consumption of Travis's album, it's projected to drop 92% in uh, streams and sales. It's an like old project. The week after. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. And people it's, just hyped for him to drop, but sure. we heard that 10 years ago. Yeah. So it's not going to do as well as Sab Sabrina, that's a new artist, mm -hmm. a new merger, and she's killing yeah. with new, fresh music mm -hmm. opposed to an album that's 10 years ago. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's understandable. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, sure. yeah. Um, and it just, it really just speaks to ultimately, like, and there's a lot of artists who do uh, artists at that level who do the gimmicks mm. to to push their music and you know, again it, do, do what you got to do it's fine but it just became this whole it became more than what i think it needed to be um like travis dropping the project on streaming was exciting enough for sure but putting all of that effort into make and and it was it's one of the highest selling rap products of this year you which know, says not, a lot it, about it the is culture the, it's the highest yeah the, like yeah. that's crazy insane like, but that's how you know the quality of music is kind of in this weird space right now for that album to be number one this year. And it's we in September. Yeah, so absolutely. That just tells you the game of rip. Like, yeah. yeah. But yeah, shout out to him. But yeah, like, I'm not, su yeah, I'm not surprised that he, he fell number two with mm -hmm. Sabrina. It's like, we just bring it back an old album. Yeah. Yeah. But so, um, I don't know. Sabrina. I, you, you like Sabrina? She's dope. She's dope. She has an album or she dropping singles? She, right? No, she dropped the album. So you like the album? Short and sweet. It's good. It's really good. It's one of my favorite albums this year. Really? I'm not going to cap. It's my, yeah. it's shit nice. It's shit nice. Out of one to ten, what you give it? Eight. 8.5. Okay, respectfully. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. Yo, uh, do you, you like pop music? Nah. You don't? I, I want to say I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I just, it's not my preference. Okay. Or like I didn't really dive into it as far as like 
But I want to though, because yeah. obviously as an artist, I want to branch out into mm-hmm. these different genres. So yeah, no, for I, sure. I would say if you get a moment, put that. It's, it's, it's gonna be different. It's gonna be a different. Yeah, experience no, for sure. You know? I already know. I already know. But, <laughs> but hopefully, one of these days we could cross over. Yeah, and that's, man. I already know that's a different world over yeah, here. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, but it's it's good music. Yeah, I, yeah. I enjoyed it. So okay. Um, yeah, she's she's staying pretty consistent. I think her second week was like a hundred k. So she's gonna. She's gonna like retain a lot of listening, and Travis you put me is, on. You put me on. It's just gonna fall, but yeah. um, it was just a really interesting thing to see. Like, I, it was completely unexpected, um, and yeah, I mean, it speaks to a lot of conversations we've been having on the pod about hip hop, where their numbers are, pop and country are elevating and, and being prioritized, um, and you know, Travis, Travis tried and he almost got it, and now it's you know. Kinda I feel back. like once he do a new fresh album, it's gonna go right back to what it is. Yeah, you know I mean, you told it's Travis. Like, yeah, it's Travis. Day. Yeah, so he got it. He good. Yeah, yeah. So that was that. Um, did you see Little Dirk's tweet about hip hop? Nah, we said. So Lil Dirk tweeted last week. He said, "Hip hop ain't what it used to be." Dot dot dot. And there were a lot of people responding to that some people blame him for the state that hip-hop is in and i think it's just that was crazy part of this continual ongoing conversation we've been having about the state of hip-hop i, I want to ask at, at, for you as a rapper how do you feel when people give these blanket critiques to the genre and say like oh the state of hip-hop sucks hip-hop's trash i don't want to say it sucks it's changing mm-hmm. like anything else to change over the you know over time mm-hmm. um from a person that came up in a different era and now we here, I, I get the perception of he what he had for music because it was a different energy, it was a different sound back then to where it's now is watered down. Yeah. And a lot of the blame is for social media mm-hmm. or streams to where it's like people not looking for talent no more, they're looking for numbers. Mm-hmm. So I guess with all of that package then, for a person like Dirk, which is like, what, he's like my age, a little older. I think he's like early 30s. Like I get what people say that, mm-hmm. but a person like me is like, nah, it's just like, I feel like music is just, it's more of a larger spectrum now. Like yeah. some people don't, some people don't understand or get it or don't want to get it. Yeah. But a person like me, like, I don't think it fell off. It's right. just different pockets now. Like mm-hmm. to where it's like, it's just, it's just more than what it was back then, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's my intake on that. Yeah. I think people, I think people make a big deal about change. Like, people just respond negatively to change. Yeah. Like, nothing is going to stay con- the same that it yeah, used to be. Exactly. Styles change. Sports change. And everything repeats <laughs> itself, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, you know? So, like, it doesn't, it doesn't, I'm not shocked that hip-hop has changed. I mean, like you said, we grew up in a time where we were going to buy CDs. Now we open our phone streams, and stream you know? stuff. And One, st- like, you get a, a million streams, you probably get, like, four or $500. Even yeah. the math don't work. But, like, it's just in a different game we in. And it's like... Mm-hmm. Some people stick to their guts and traditional to where it's like, nah, I like the old hip hop. I don't like this new shit. Mm-hmm. But you got to just roll with the punches and go with the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, hopefully it get back to what it was. Yeah. And I also blame these labels and industry that's making it where it's at now. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of the blame goes on to the artists when it is the system. There's a lot mm-hmm. of different things at play that change things for the better, for the worse. And I think when you... On the surface, like, those years where hip-hop was the most popular genre, super dope. Right. And I think a lot of the credit went to the artists, but it was the labels. It was a lot of things that were working in their favor. And now we see, as they're pulling their support back or they're adjusting how they do things. You got to be lit before they get you. Because they're not, that development, yeah, that artist de- development is out the window. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? Absolutely. Or it's a lost art. Yeah. So... That's how, do, how it is, too. How do you feel about Dirk? People were blaming him for the state of hip-hop. Nah, he got, he got every right to say he's entitled to what he feel. And mm-hmm. he's not wrong. It's just how he feel. He's an artist at the end of the day. So mm-hmm. he's on the top. He's on a, he's an A-list celebrity. So him saying that, he has justified reasons to say that. Mm-hmm. I'm a Dirk fan, so mm-hmm. you can't ask me that. I'm a little biased. <laughs> but as far as generically of him saying that, I, I, like, I get what he's saying. Yeah. Like, I just got a different perception of it. But yeah. nah, I don't feel like he's wrong. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'm I'm all for holding things and genres accountable. Yeah, being critical of things. I think people are afraid to be critical sometimes. It's like you have to Social like everything. Media. It's like, no, no, no one yeah. likes everything. Like it's just it's impossible. But so. you get sco- you you get violated for like standing your ground. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying it's like. Yeah. The trend and the norm is being a yes man, and it's like that's what social media normalized it to be. And it's like 
you do a one opinion that majority of people don't like, they they get you for that. So mm -hmm. it's a it, we are in a weird time, but you yeah. know we adjust. Absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of the times that we are in, we had got a big announcement this week. I remember I was sitting in the crib, while getting ready to watch NFL, mm -hmm. NFL Sunday kickoff weekend. Super hype as y'all see Jets up. <laughs> um, we are we are gonna win tonight. By the time y'all hear this, I'll, I'll be celebrating the Jets beating the 49ers. Um, CMC is out, but hey, it's fine. You, you got to play who's in front of you. You know what I'm saying? But, so I'm sitting there, and then I check Twitter, and someone shares a tweet to a group chat. Kendrick Lamar tweets, Super Bowl uh, 59 halftime show. And I watch the video, and he announces that he's performing at the halftime show. Yes, sir. Which, I think it's a very layered thing. I, I want to get your perspective on it before I get into all of my deep I'm just letting you know I'm biased, too. You, you're biased towards Kendrick? That's my favorite artist. That's your, of all time? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, all right. You, okay. Whatever you ask, just be prepared. <laughs> you know, like, you don't know, make that. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. Um, how, how do you feel about people who think Wayne should have got it? They not wrong. Mm -hmm. I would have been happy either way because mm -hmm. Wayne is a legend in his own right, too. So, yeah. could have been him or, him, or, or Kendrick. Like, yeah. But I'm happy. I'm happy as Kendrick, too. Like, mm -hmm. So, I don't, I don't. Hopefully, Wayne get it next year. Mm -hmm. um, this is not me. This like I'm, I'm asking this generally because people have said this. Do you think Kendrick would have gotten the halftime show if the events of these last few months didn't nah, take place? He would have never got that respect. In my in my opinion, though, mm -hmm. like this whole Drake thing and him executing this whole rollout for not like us and yeah. this whole everything, nah, because he a boogeyman. He I don't think he would have dropped at all this shit. Yeah, if none of this would have happened, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it kind of it favors for him. Mm. It's definitely capitalizing on a moment, which I I, I can respect that. I, mm -hmm. I completely respect that. Last year, they capitalized on Usher's residency yeah. with the Super Bowl in Vegas. Yeah. Um, Rihanna, you know, her show, they were in L.A. in 2022. They capitalized on the hometown love, having Dr. Dre, and then he brought out Snoop, Kendrick, oh, that was Eminem. Fun. That was so That was dope. That was, that was so probably fun. one of my favorite ones. Yeah. I think that and Usher would be my favorite Super Bowl halftime shows ever. I do hope Kendrick bring out Wayne, though. I think that would be a special moment. I'm glad you said that because... The the layers to this are what make it and what's made it this big discourse on social media. Are, 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 do you use like Twitter a lot? Are you on Twitter a lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so, on Twitter. So you've I'm seen all the Yeah, I see the vibe. I see the vibe. It got exhausting so fast just seeing one, people disrespect Wayne. Um, two people saying like, Oh, yeah, 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 I hate Kendrick, you're Drake fans, y'all don't want him there, blah, blah, blah. I think I think there's a lot of nuance in this situation. It's a lot so, of opinions that I don't People just like talking, yeah. just, just to talk. Yeah, and like, the problem is there are trolls and there are people who are trying to bots. have real conversation, right? And then it's conflicting. The, yeah, it's like conflicting. the trolls are trolling the real talkers. The real talkers are trying to have conversation with the trolls, yeah. and they don't. Their agendas aren't the same. Yeah. I would have loved to see Wayne do it too. Wayne last year, I was for sure. For after sure. last year's Super Bowl, he was like, "Yo, I I, I want to perform in my and hometown." Wayne go. <sighs> absolutely, absolutely. Like he said, I'm gonna make it hard for them not to. I know he's been rolling out an album for like the last year and a half. I would um, love to see Wayne. Yeah, you know, like, I, I would love to see it too. The hometown thing makes sense. I think people do need to understand, like, when it comes to the Super Bowl halftime show, it has nothing to do with hometowns. We we crunch the numbers. There have only been four people who have performed in their hometown in the Super mm, Bowl halftime show. I know that. There have been 59 Super Bowls, so it's 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 not the norm. It's not a it's not an expectation. I do think because. Dr. Dre and Kendrick got the hometown thing in 2022. People thought that, yeah, yeah, people thought it would just be the norm. It's not the norm. But so. before Kendrick was a conversation, it was Wayne, all right? Um, I'm not sure who, like, the leading candidates were. Wayne uh, might as well have went on a campaign for himself to get it. He went on, he did in, in, in an interview with Taylor Rooks. He said he wanted to do it. In an interview with YG, he said he wanted to do it. Rolling Stone interviewed him, asked him about it. Mm, like, so like, he was requesting it yeah, on these major platforms. Like he, he said, I want to do it. I, I can't think of the last time. It's the 59? 59, yeah, 59. Super he going to get it soon. The next three, uh, three Maybe, five. maybe. I yeah, don't he know. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would love to do it. And I would love to see it. And he's more than capable of it. And I think the other thing is people have been using this to disrespect Wayne's catalog. When Wayne is top five within rappers who have top 10 billboard hits, mm, like pain. Wayne has hits. Yeah. It's only a 12 minute set. Wayne has more than enough songs. Yeah, go. To, That's why I said 12 minutes. He a 12 will minute go set. crazy. Like, oh my God. And he's got widespread appeal. Like Wayne is not just a, an artist that we know. He's an artist that the world knows. Like he gave you re records like Lollipop was a pop 
smash back in the day. I will go crazy. How, how to man. love? Like you, you, you let him do how to love with a live band. Like that, that joint might go off Bring in the Super Bowl. The like, three. Yeah, like he has he has so much that he could do. So people who are trying to make it seem like Wayne didn't belong on that stage, didn't have the catalog for well done, well done. And saying that he wasn't a good performer. Like I've seen Wayne live. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Like I said, he's like talking. But I think Kendrick just got more shock value right now. Right now, Kendrick is definitely bigger. The the moment is definitely Kendrick's. Uh, so I'm not I'm not mad at it. Mm. Um Nikki, I don't know if you saw Nikki's tweets about the whole thing, but she today she went on a very long rant about how Rock Nation is involved and her Rock Nation Tough. frustrations stem from her and Meg and issues she has with Jay Z. So I think all of these things just came together to just make not only her mad, Birdman tweeted. I ain't seen Birdman, Birdman tweet. <laughs> I don't know the last time I saw a Birdman tweet, but he tweeted, called them pussies, tag Drake and <laughs> Lil Wayne and Nikki. He was like, yo, like, YMCMB, we gonna let them know. Um, and I think, you know, the the other conversation has been, is Kendrick going to bring Lil Wayne out? We know Kendrick is a huge Lil Wayne fan, like huge. There was a a mixtape cover of him with the with the eye tattoos, like the face tattoos mm. that Wayne had. So he's a huge huge affinity for Wayne. At first, I was like, yeah, Wayne, Are you talking about C four, the um, tape? one one of them. I I don't know, but like, but uh. but like, no, like Kendrick had did, did a mixtape cover. Yeah, that's what that I'm saying. Like, I think yeah. I think you're talking about C four. Maybe, right? yeah. um, but. At first, I was like, oh, yeah, Wayne being a special guest for Kendrick would be cool in his hometown. Like, it doesn't matter if you're the headline or the special guest. Like, like just, just go out there. Like, do your thing. People are going to be happy about it. As I thought about it more, I'm like, I don't know. How, I, w- would I want to be a special guest in my hometown or would I want to be the headliner in my hometown? Yeah. I, I'd probably want to be the headliner in my hometown, even if you remove ego. Just like, again, the fact that he expressed he wanted it. I don't think Usher campaigned for the Super Bowl. Rihanna didn't like. I, I don't know the last time I've seen someone say, "Yo, I want to do this," right? And, and it makes so like much sense. The face low key, low yeah, key. that the person didn't, especially get it. in the hometown, too. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, it's politics and this shit, exactly, it's, exactly. Even... But it's it's it puts Wayne in a tough spot because him and Kendrick have worked together in the past, so Wayne probably would want to go out, but given the feud that just happened and Wayne's loyalty to Drake, Drake, right? Him like. Him being put in that position where it's like, damn, do I go out from my hometown or do I not do something that I, I wanted to do? I, I want to perform on this stage, but I have loyalty to people who are feuding with the guy who is headlining and might ask me to do it. So a lot, a lot of layers to it. Um, the conversation surrounding it has just been very, very, very annoying. And I th- just y'all don't if y'all, if y'all like Kendrick, I love Kendrick. That's fine. Don't disrespect Lil Wayne, though. Yeah, nah, like, no, you, nah, you, you don't have to disrespect Lil Wayne. To, to hype up your guy I, it, It's a huge moment no For Kendrick No matter who you are Like they gonna violate Internet is internet They violating Drake for Cause he lost to Kendrick He yeah. is still the go He is yeah. still Drake At the end of the day Like mm-hmm. that's him Yeah So it's like I chatting mm-hmm. What I heard somebody say Oh well, they, they said some I don't matter if They just slandering Drake It mm-hmm. don't even matter Like yeah. I, I don't like That type of talk Like Yeah no this whole, I don't This I beef that people Disrespecting Michael Jackson Like I'm like bro Come on man Like y'all, you don't gotta do that You don't they gotta be Like violent. yo just they Just love violent. Not like us Love meet the grand Like yeah, just, just for something to, For them to talk about You know yeah. People live for the internet There's yeah. people that stay at home And just be on the internet All day to, to troll mm-hmm. So it's like We always That's just a part of this shit yeah. We always gonna have to deal with that it's so, been an ongoing conversation on the pod, but I don't want to ask you, like, are, to are, are you tired of people talking about this beef? Like, are, 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 are you over it? Yeah, I'm over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's time, time to move on. They both greats. They yeah. both goats. Mm-hmm. We already know the outcome yeah. of, that, that, of that battle, but at the end of the day, it didn't affect really nobody because Drake is still Drake. Kendrick is still Kendrick. Yeah. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, it going down as the top, yeah. top ones, you heard? So. There was a there was a moment in the Super Bowl ad where Kendrick said no round twos, I which that. was alluding to <laughs> Drake's game two post. Yeah, I see that. I um, mean, <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you think like would you be interested in seeing a game two or a round two of, nah, of this? You, yeah, you're, we, you're done. It's over. You're done. Yeah, we, it's over. I'm Kendrick already it. packed that. It is what it is. Yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got some Drake Joe too. Here. Yeah, we got some Drake. We here. We here. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. Guys. Nah, nah. My Salute guys. to Drake though. <laughs> Salute to Drake. Like I said, I'm, Kendrick's my favorite artist. So yeah. it's like it was even fun doing um like 
like going out my friends, yeah. like because they Drake fans, and I'm a Kendrick fan. So oh, absolutely. While it was going down, we we battled on Twitter. Yeah, I'm going yeah, to my yeah, man's like what, yeah. what. So it was fun. It was fun, but all right, let's go. Yeah, like let's yeah. let's keep it pushing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's it's had it's had an impact that I don't think people have acknowledged because they've been having so much fun right. with not like us with slandering Drake. Like I, I would love your perspective on this. This has really split the music industry to yeah, where certain did. people yeah. aren't collaborating with certain people because of the implications of it. Yeah. And it's affected hip hop at large. Like it's isolated fan bases. People who liked both may not like may not listen to either now and they're going to find other music to listen to mm-hmm. like this that that beef and and the the result of it has been perfect for like pop and country to get this launch pad to take over because like you don't see pop beefs you don't see country beefs like the these people, with us, they all work with each other they're yeah. all cool with each other for the most part so like it's it's love and it's like yo I re- and also i'd as much as Drake is my favorite artist of all time, but I don't listen to his diss songs all the time. Like, so Family Matters, all that. It was cool in the moment, but I don't I, like. I don't listen to my favorite artist diss songs. I listen to the other shit. Right. And so people who are just so connected and really clinging to these diss songs for months, like it's it's weird. And the general population is kind of tired of it. Yeah. Like they they don't really seem interested in like all of the negativity of the of the conversation anymore like it happened it's the, well, we got a hit out of it one of the biggest hits of this decade awesome but like all the discourse surrounding it all of that like people are just are just tired of it and so so they're looking elsewhere and it's you know you in a moment like this it would be the perfect time for the next guy to rise up but we don't we don't have a next guy like there's there's a lot of people have been called next up, but they haven't really they haven't really yeah like stepped yeah. up and done it. So I'm I'm interested like you know a year from now how we'll be talking about hip hop how we'll be, how we'll be looking at hip hop. Um, I've, it goes without saying the numbers are down, the sales are down, the perception of it is down. Like you look at the VMAs, like they they did voting for the song of the summer like that and not like us. We're both up for the voting. They already got a limit because they're doing like a bracket. And they're both they both got eliminated. So it's like at the VMAs, there's not gonna be too much hip hop representation. Only nominated because it was towards a diss record. So right. imagine if it wasn't no diss, yeah, or no type of confrontation. It, it would have never been on that. Yeah. So it's just like going back to what you're saying. How I feel is like it's only us, our genre, our people, our culture that always go against each other. Mm-hmm. You don't see that in pop. You don't see that in culture. You don't see that in Latin music for yeah. the most part. Yeah. Us is like we fig have the crab in a barrel type of effect to mm-hmm. where it's like we're not trying to help each other come out that bucket, you feel what I'm saying? And that's just outside of music. That's just us as a culture. So yeah. I feel like we just gotta come because we at the end of the day, when we come together, we're the strongest ever. Like mm-hmm. nobody mess with us, but we affect each other. Yeah. So I feel like once we understand that concept, I feel like we'll be good. And that's gonna take over time. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Cause obviously the the shit we've been through, but it's us that's our weakest, like that's our strongest enemy for real. I feel mm-hmm. like, I feel like once we come together and get on that same page outside of music, which is life, yeah, it could be way more, you know, you no, know, way more sturdy. Yeah, and that on top of the system not being built for us, and so we make for it, sure. we make it easier for the system to exactly. keep us down when we're keeping ourselves down. Mm-hmm. So for sure, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, but it's very tough. All that to say, we getting better though. Huge moment for Kendrick. Like I'm, I'm definitely happy for him. Like he's on the run of a lifetime. The Grammy is going to be a week before the Super Bowl, so he's likely walking oh, well, out with okay. a couple Grammys. Then he'll be walking. Yeah, he's gonna Super have Bowl a good stage. run. He got to mm-hmm. drop a tape. I need to, I need to see a tape. But yeah, like the album he, probably will be coming next year. He definitely milked this whole beef. <laughs> this, I, I he needed this, brother. I don't think he milked it. Hey, come on, bro. I, I, what? What happened? Oh, pause. Yeah, pause. pause. Milk this whole beef, bro. <laughs> that is that's, crazy. that's crazy. That is crazy. Oh, that, that is crazy. That is crazy. You know what? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All my friends is corn, bro. Word. Like. <laughs> pause. 
Correct, yo. Y'all niggas. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Pause, you got I'm, it. I'm typically a lot more responsible with the way I. But you, we things. here. You we, see yeah, these yeah, little. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you see these. I'll, I'll take that one. Yeah, um, we'll take that. <laughs> he, he definitely. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, damn, I don't even know how to say it without sounding crazy. But yes, I, I don't think he did. I more so think the fans did. Like, it, it, I said this several weeks ago. When you have a big record like that, you drop a video for it. You know, you do stuff like the pop. Nah, he out. went crazy. He went like crazy. he, I, he, he, he earned all this. Like I, you know, I was for my fandom. I was on the losing side of it, but you know, I, I understand why he's doing everything he's doing. But I don't think he's done too much. At, at the end of the day, he dropped four records, dropped a video, performed. He's gonna perform again at the pop out. I mean, the uh, Super Bowl in like five months. He's gonna get the Grammys that he earned. Like I, don't, I don't think he did too much. I do think there's some politics and stuff behind it, and mm. just some some machinations and the way people are coming together to, you know, take out the boys. It's 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 noticeable, and I, and I, you know, I I think people joke about it a lot, but there's like there, there's a lot more to it than I think people really have acknowledged because they're having so much fun hating and seeing him finally down. Yeah, and when you when you're the great, they, a lot of people want to see you down. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That just happened with everybody. That's great. You, they, it's always a moment in time where they everybody wishing like, damn, I hope he fall right now. But yeah. you great at the end of the day. You are gonna bounce right back. You know what I'm saying? So absolutely, ain't nothing. Are you a weekend fan? How you know that? I had to ask. I'm just asking. Nah, yeah, you OD. Know? What's OD. what's your favorite weekend album? Trilogy. Trilogy. So, no, no, no. I'm Deadline, Beauty Behind the Madness. Beauty Behind, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Deadline, but Trilogy is definitely a classic, though. Trilogy is a classic. Yes, Beauty Behind the Madness is when he like had that like star turn, like that like. <sighs> it's like he was he was introducing the like the you no know, the the pop mm -hmm. weekend we know of now, but he yeah. still had that that the original weekend. Yeah, that, that like, raw, if you know that raw, yeah, yeah, yeah. talking his pain with the ladies, talking the pain, yeah. even though he was a heavy pill head, heavy yeah. drug head, it's just like. I, f I fuck with that aesthetic, that that aesthetic of the weekend. Yeah. Like now, like he's still one of my favorite artists, mm -hmm. but he he went to the pop side. Yeah, crazy. It's, like, it's very different now. It's yeah, very different. I, I want him to go back. You want trilogy, <laughs> Kiss Land, Beauty Behind the Madness. It's funny. I I, I like the newer stuff better. Like I I I I remember you know being in my room in high school listening to Echoes of Silence and Morning. Party and the After Party Morning. and all that shit. Like Morning. Yeah, mm -hmm. like he had yeah he had bangers, but I don't know I. And I, I like a lot of different type of music. Yeah. So the pop stuff, the '80s type stuff, like I, I love that. I thought Dawn FM was amazing. After Hours was great, and After Hours had some of that old weekend after in hours, it after too. Hours. That was the the pandemic one he dropped mm -hmm. with um the blinding lights. That's um, after Starboy. That is Starboy was 2016. After Hours was 2020. So did he drop anything between that? He dropped My Dear Melancholy 2018. That was hard. Yeah, that was really Starboy good. was good money too. Starboy was fire. I Starboy, love Starboy is fire. Yeah, Starboy I think I think fire. that was his. Yeah, it was Starboy in 2016. Then his next album was yeah, yeah, After Hours. Yeah. yeah, and then after that was FM. The the FM. Don FM. Yeah, that Dawn was 2022. Yeah. yeah, see, like the FM and um, what's the one we just said? After Hours. Yeah, After yeah. Hours. Uh, yeah, that the, that was like full cool. pop. At that yeah, point. Full you pop, know what I'm saying? I need him go back to the R and B when you in the mm. crib just lights down, smoking a blunt with Shorty. <laughs> like that was the vibe. Like. Mm. He had the vibes. When you smack, you got to listen to him off the off the, I don't even smoke strooms or eat strooms. You just got to vibe out to this nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? He, he was vibey. He was vibey. Like, For sure. You know what I'm sure. saying? Um, but I asked because he just announced his upcoming album, Hurry Up Tomorrow. Um, Wait, what? Yeah, he's he's got an album coming out. What? Yeah, called Hurry How Up many, Tomorrow. When he did that? When he said that? Uh, last week. What? He announced it last week. Yeah, yeah. He's like, He's got a single drop in this Friday. I think it's called Dancing. I heard he changed his name or the belt. To his, to his... Yes, he is officially just uh, Abel Tesfaye. What's up in now? He's, he not he announced his Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's got a single drop in this Friday. His album apparently leaked over the weekend. I, I have it. I haven't played it yet, so I don't know if it's actually the album. But um, yeah. So Abel Abel will be coming soon. New so single. no more weekend. Yeah, he he is he is Abel Tesfaye. He's uh, allegedly wait Abel what. Uh, his last name is Tesfay, T E S. Oh, so he's doing the whole name now. Yeah, but I mean, his, his Twitter at is still the weekend, but his name on there is is his real name. So I I don't know what he's. I remember because I had to cover it for work. He said he's retiring the weekend. It's it's in his yeah, final chapter or whatever. That. I don't know I um, whether he's weekend weekday. He's tomorrow. still one of my favorites, but I just hope I hope he don't go more left than what he's doing right now. Mm. Even though he's one of the top artists of the world. Yeah. Just as a personal fan of mine, it's like, like. 
I used to li- day one listener. Like mm-hmm. I want him to go back to his roots at least half of the tape. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm 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 definitely interested in, in the in the direction. Um, because yeah, Don't, Don't FM while I loved it, it didn't necessarily have like that hit compared to like After Hours uh, had Blinding Lights, which is one of the most like charting songs ever. You know what I'm saying? Um, it ha- had a song like Save Your Tears that went crazy. Um, it's it's been a while since like we had a weekend hit hit like it's it's it's, it's changing it's, it's his, been changing his image again. Oh, you know him, maybe. yeah. We, uh, so you don't, you just know he's just dropping. You just yeah. don't know. Well, this about. is supposed to close off the After Hours trilogy. Trilogy. So it's After oh, so, Hours, okay. Dawn FM, and then um, Hurry Hurry Up Tomorrow is is the the final yeah. album within that trilogy. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting. I'm definitely interested in the direction. I, I I too love Weekend. You just put me on. You just put yeah, me yeah. on. Yeah, hey man, that's what we're here for. Yeah, that's what we're yeah. here for. So that's fire. Looking forward to that. Um, we got new a new single from Harlem's own ASAP Rocky featuring J. Cole called Ruby Rosary. Now, before we get into the music, how you feel about ASAP Rocky? As as, as like a true, true Harlem nigga. How, how, how you feel about Rocky? So first of all, off off rip, like he's from Harlem, so mm-hmm. you know, gotta give respect when it's due. He the OG of this of right now. Um one of the well, my my opinion, one of the most creative artists, like just with fashion and just, you know, doing his thing, having his own sound. Yeah. Now, let's fast forward to now. <laughs> could be honest, like, mess with ASAP Rocky OD, and like mm-hmm. I said, I look up to him creatively, but he could, I don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like he could do a better rollout of what the singles he's doing right now. Yeah. I do feel like he had a stage where he feel like he could just do whatever he want, and that's cool. You feel what I'm saying? Because he did submit himself in the, in the game right now. But as a far as a consumer and just a person of a student of hip hop and being from Harlem and just him being a, a OG artist for us, he could, I feel like he could have upped it more. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? He comfortable. Yeah. He comfortable. Very comfortable. I yeah, mean, I get it. You know, Rihanna, yeah. two kids. Yeah, he comfortable. He got money. That's why I said whatever happens, whatever he do is, is still going, he's still ASAP Rock at the end yeah. of the day. But I do feel like for this album that's rolling out right now, it should be a bigger presence. It should yeah. be more energy. Even the songs too. Like I feel like these songs is album cuts. They're not singles. Yeah. So, like I said, man. But who gonna tell him what? He's ASAP Rocky. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Harlem. God is from Harlem. <laughs> like I still look at him as the OG and one of the OGs now of this shit. But yeah. I do wish that his rollout was a little better and more creative as he usually do. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, I agree. None of the songs have really moved me. Um, yeah, not even joint. that J. Cole joint, yeah, respectfully. Like, production from Alchemist, J. Cole feature, I, I wish it was just a J. Cole song. Like, mm. Rocky didn't really add anything yeah. lyrically for me. Um, yeah. I, his music hasn't interested me in years. Like, I feel like that 2010 to, like, 2015 what was the that sweet was spot bop. for him. That was his bop. And ever since then, I just, nothing's really moved me at all. But I do feel like A$AP Rocky still got room to come up with a, uh, a new classic I do feel like maybe I don't know what it is I don't want to speak upon something I don't know but mm-hmm. like maybe his team maybe it's just him in a different space you know he got the kids and his wife now but like I do feel like before it's all said and done he's gonna come out with a, another classic yeah I mean a lot of people feel like once Yams passed that just it, That's just, it ruined everything everybody know that though yeah that ain't no secret yeah yeah, yeah so like, that's, that, that affected everybody yeah so I'm just like, can he do it without Yams' influence? I feel like he could. I feel like he could. He just got to tap in. He, like you said, he's too comfortable. He out, he, he's somewhere else right now. Yeah. How, how do you feel about him uh, still dissing Drake? It's over, man. I'm tired of it. <laughs> like I said, like, what are we talking about right now? Like, but it's the industry, man. Yeah. I, for me, because they've been going back and forth for a couple for a years minute. Now. you know we all know why and yeah of course but for me it's just like when you got the girl and you got two babies with the girl you don't got to say nothing to the nigga you won already like you have you don't need to say if if i had the girl that you want and i i had babies with her when you want that babies were i'm not why am i responding to you sometimes it'd be it'd be marketing strategies too i mean like, yeah and yeah all, He's, all a part of the rollouts all a part of the schemes and all that so they use that to their advantage. Some, yeah. Of course, it don't make sense to us, but it may make sense to, like, let me diss Drake because I know it's going to go up. Yeah, it's like people are talking about it, but the disses aren't good and the music don't even have motion. So, like, I don't think anyone's going to be talking about this song for a long time. The album's going to drop. I, I don't think it's going to do much. I remember I was having a conversation <laughs> with my boy, Big Sean just recently dropped, and we were like, yo, who, who's going to sell more first week? 
And I was like, I, I thought Big Sean would sell more. Big Sean ended up selling 22K, so. It's a different game we in. People expecting to see 100K plus. Yeah, it's not happening. Like the CDs, it's not happening. Like yeah. On the average, we selling, they selling 20 to 40. Yeah. That's on average. Yeah. Like a person like Travis Scott, uh, top A-list celebrities, yeah, you, you barely seeing 100, 200 now. Mm-hmm. And that's Taylor Swift numbers. That's Rihanna numbers. That's track, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. we in a different game, man. That's CD sales. That's that's units. Yeah. So And the streams don't even math up anyway, so I don't even look at that no more. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It don't determine nothing. For sure, for sure. But yeah, I, I'm honestly just not interested. Uh, so his album, Don't Be Dumb, I'll listen when it drops. But... Yeah, I'm going to tap in. I'm going to tap in. Mm-hmm. Like I said, he's still a Harlem artist, so mm-hmm. off rip, I'm biased. Like, I, I want, like, that's just that. But yeah. I do wish he could prepare better and just get back to your creative bag. Yeah. He was the one coming out of Harlem, too. Like, it was, it was a great era. Well, all of them, like, the, the mob, you know what I'm saying? Great so, era, like, fucking, uh, what, what, what were the tracks back in the day? Hands on the Wheel, Goldie. Yeah, when they tagged like, up with TDE with Schoolboy a lot. Peso, all that Ferg, shit. Ferg, great oh, you know. You know what I'm saying? Nas, 12 V. It, yeah. was a, it was a time so to be alive records. uptown. You know what Bro, I'm saying? We, we, we was in high school. Me and my crew, we called ourselves a- ASAP Mob. That's, that's how Word. influential they were. <laughs> <laughs> we, we was doing the handshake and everything. Yeah, nah, respectfully. They, yeah. Was, they was an inspiration to a lot of people. So yeah. I just hopefully, like I said before, it's all said and done. It could come back together and make some magic. You heard? Especially yeah. uh, ASAP Mob tape. That would be crazy. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, yeah. Ferg, Ferg seems like he's out trying to do his own thing. He about now. to like, drop soon too. Like he dropped the ASAP off his name. He's 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 been grinding. Yeah, yeah. They so. they still at it, but mm-hmm. I, I I do want them to get back to their bag. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We shall. Shout see. out to Ferg too, gangster. Um, lastly, and this is kind of music related, but also kind of gets into our sports entertainment segment. So, uh, recently Angel Reese started her podcast called Unapologetically Angel. Already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She got a podcast she already. Just entered the lead. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm I'm glad you feel this All right. way. Well, so success, she, I hope success come to her. Way, absolutely. Her. So she's, she's been ver- very vocal about Caitlin Clark, of course, addressing rumors of whether or not she was dating Kevin Durant and G Herbo mm-hmm. and all this stuff. Just very, very forthcoming. Mm-hmm. And we've seen a lot of players starting podcasts recently. Of course, we got Draymond Green, we got the Paul Georges, we got the Trey Youngs, Gilbert Arenas, um, Gilbert Arenas, of course, were retired athletes as well. And mm-hmm. then we've seen within hip hop. Some artists have their own podcast. Well, music, rather. Artists have their own podcast. Lil Yachty, we saw his crash out a couple weeks ago. Tank has his own pod. And for me, it's really interesting seeing people who are still active participants in the space then giving commentary on the space and speaking about people, their peers in the space, people they might collaborate with, people they might have beef with. Like, that. that's just weird to me. I don't know. Like, how, how do you feel about seeing, like, current athletes, current artists being cultural commentators on the thing that they engage in. I mean, everybody has a right. They they entitled to mm-hmm. what they say and what they do, right? But I don't know. It's like some people who have a main mission and want to do a side mission with the main mission. Mm-hmm. Like I like I don't want to say how I feel. It's like if it works for them, it works. I like now, if you are if you are a basketball player, right, mm-hmm. and you're not really doing nothing as a <laughs> basketball player, yeah. but you being a podcast, what's your real focus now? Like you posted, like you, you half of your time is devoted to podcasting. Yeah, when that half of the time could be devoted to you being a better player. Yeah. Now, as far as like people like Draymond, who's already cemented, got four yeah. rings, and they could do that. Mm-hmm. Like, I right, I did what I did in the NBA. Now I could do a side mission. Yeah. Hopefully, get another bag. Also, too, they do it for funding. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. So they're sponsored. Yeah. Like I said, it depends on. I feel like it depends. Yeah. Like it, it got to make sense. I agree. It depends yeah. on the level you're at, yeah. and also how you're using the platform. Right. So, like you said, someone who's established, like a Paul George or Draymond, fine. Someone like a Trey Young, he he's an all star. Like yeah, he, I he, feel like he should be like special guest on people podcasts. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I've, Reese, I haven't listened to that a single crazy. episode. You killed me with Andrew Reese. Oh yeah, that Angel, was different. Yeah, already. And but she also like using taking advantage of the situation. She's a huge brand now. So yeah, I, I, so I, like, I get it, that business too. wise. Marketing. It makes sense. Yeah, it one hundred percent makes sense. But like, damn, I mean, this is your first year you started a podcast. Yeah, and I think I think the content of it too. Like I think she has every right to kind of clear her name in certain situations yeah. but there's power in not saying anything like you can let people believe whatever they want about you but just nah, but like you know Angel Reese, she not 
it's yeah, not, she, it's no, not she, saying she, she's very vocal. She's yeah, very vocal. Yeah, and that's why I yeah, love about I, her too, I respect that. Yeah. And I think I think the Caitlyn Clark stuff too. Like and, and it's good that she's kind of cleared the air. Like, yo, me and Caitlyn fuck with each other. Like we're competitors. The media make it seem like they got odds. Like Yeah, I mean the, the they want that. That, yeah. that. That's what they want. That's what, the story. That's what yeah. sells. That's what gets the eyes on everything. Yeah. Like Magic Bird, you know, Braun Curry, like rivalries just get get that attention. So yeah, I completely sure, get it. Sure. Um but yeah, yeah. I, I just I'm just like damn, already, like damn. Like, but you know, she dogging though. No, they, absolutely, dogging. absolutely. It was it was tough to see her. She uh, wrist injury. She's know, out for the rest of the killed, season. I ain't gonna lie, that killed me when I yeah. seen that. Like, you can't even go to the playoffs. Yeah, super tough. Damn. Super tough. Hopefully, she, she get a speedy recovery for real. For sure, she's a dog. Yeah, no, nah, she's a dog. The 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 sky. <laughs> Earlier, I said Chicago, Chicago wings. wings is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> might, have to be the, might have to be the title of the episode but um <laughs> but yeah the sky were great like and she, she fit in immediately and she was really cooking yeah, like, shout out to her doing her thing so, so she, big she's making her, WNBA but. definitely more marketable as far as like a whole brand like yeah. people want to watch WNBA because of her and Caitlyn like have, have, have you been to a game nah I want to yo you gotta pop out to a Liberty game I know they're, I know, they're lit I know. they're lit you gotta pop out I know for sure I do for sure. We'll, we'll, we'll all do a group trip. Group, group trip to a Liberty game. Uh, you paying? Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 nah, I'm fuck, I ain't gonna lie. The tickets, the tickets is a little cheap. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we can buy buy too expensive. We can use the Patreon money. I'm joking, Kieran. Yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so, hey, man. Salute to Angel on what she's doing on the court. Yeah. Hopefully this... And, and I, I honestly think regardless of what her content is on the podcast, it's going to pop regardless yeah, but i just hope sure. i just hope that the thing she says doesn't come back to bite her in any way like someone like draymond who's established on the court i'm gonna talk shit about you no my podcast i'm gonna talk shit about you but he's also been in the league for a while it's different someone like her because we already knew what it was before she came in yeah but and I, she stamped as a like she stamped it for her rookie year she went crazy we ain't seen no numbers like that from a rookie Re rebound wise yeah she, yeah, she double double, double every yeah, night yeah. absolutely absolutely nah she good she be alright I mean at the end of the day bro like like college and now she always gonna get people that hate her or people that just don't can't stand her yeah. she, it comes with it but I think she gonna be fine as long as she continue playing good and being her she's sturdy that's the key she's that's sturdy. the key as long as it doesn't take away from nah, yeah, what, what, your production sure. on the court then, for, sure. for sure um lastly um so uh miss two bees has been asking me to introduce this for mm. quite some time so we're gonna get armand's word of the week this week um so fergie i want to ask you when you hear the word calipigian well, well, what do you think that means what <laughs> Yo, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. what'd you say calipigian Calipigi? Calipigian. 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 You know it? I do. What? Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm the one leading the segment. <laughs> yeah, I know what it means. So you say off that word, what do I think do yeah, that word mean? Yeah, like, or, 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 or what do you think I don't know what I mean. Multifaceted. I don't know, like camouflage with it. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck, shit. I'm going over context clues right there. Um... <laughs> <laughs> What does that mean? So, calipigian is an adjective. Okay. Which means having well-shaped buttocks. I'm, I'm not even playing with you, bro. I'm dead ass. I'm dead ass. Uh, you want me to use it in a sentence? Nah. I'm I'm, 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 I'm a dude anyways. <laughs> uh, her, her maxi dress looked like it was painted on, but it was really just her calipigian cheeks and snatched waist. Okay. All right. I can't wait to hear you use Calipigian in one, one of your never. future songs. Come on, bro. <laughs> no, you you, 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 you got to show them the vocab. All right. Is this in here? Calipigian. Calipigian. Like, you, you should, like... I was super off. You, you should title the whole song Calipigian. Mm. You got to put people on, bro. Come on. That's, 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 you got another word? Nah. I, I only prepare, that's the I only, only word you came up with? I don't, it's one. We got word, a whole dictionary. It's not words of the week. It's word of the week. Yeah, it's a bunch of words. You pick one word to pick word of the week. Yeah, one Why word is that? of the week. What made you pick that word? Uh, I just love it. <laughs> I just love it. I respect. I, 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 I learned it in high school, and I was like, "That is a cool ass word." Because again, you say it, you, no one is gonna expect it to mean what it means. Yeah, nah, I did. I like at all. I like did. imagine telling Shorty, "Yo, me on. <laughs> Calipigian curves of yours." She's gonna be like. What? And then you, you show her, you know what I'm saying? Yo, that's real sophisticated. Right, right. I real, like how you did that. Real grandiloquent. You feel me? Ooh, you feel me? <laughs> yeah, right, I like that. You I like me? your approach you on that. All right, you, you flip that. You flip that. That's it. All right, all right, all right. You, you, right. you got to show them. So that's uh, word of the week. This will be coming to y'all every week. Hope y'all enjoyed Calipigian adjective, meaning 
having well-shaped buttocks. Um, <laughs> let's jump into our ad read for the week. So, have you heard of the Fine Wine Series Festival? This year, they're back with their biggest festival to date. September 14th at City Field, dive into a three-hour unlimited wine tasting. New York City's best DJs curating immaculate R&B vibes. And did we mention the dress theme, Liquid Fantasy? Save the date, book your flight, and step into a world where wine, music, fashion, and black excellence blend into the ultimate celebration Get ready to make memories that'll last a lifetime. Tickets are available at finewineseries.com. Again, that is September 14th at City Field. Make sure you go dress up, sip some wine, get all sophisticated and all that jazz. You, you, you won't want to miss it. It's time for your interview. However, I have a segment prepared for you to kind of, you know, just like loosen up. Like you can get things going. So this segment is titled Harlem Heat. So. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you some questions rapid fire. You give me a quick answer. You ready? Good to go? Okay. What's the most fire restaurant in Harlem? Damn. Restaurant? Mm-hmm. Fire restaurant? Or, like, mo- most fire place to get, get food from? I ain't going to lie. Lighthouse. One of them. Lighthouse? That's one of them. I've heard. I feel like, did Will mention Light? I don't know if Will mentioned Lighthouse, but I've, I've heard, yeah, definitely heard of Lighthouse. Pain, pain, I've pain, 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 pain. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do they serve there? Seafood. They sell... Pasta, they sell chicken. Like, okay. like you know what I'm saying? Soul food, seafood. Okay, yeah. survive. I fuck with that. Yeah, fuck pain, that. pain, pain. What's the most underrated restaurant in Harlem? Underrated? Or place to get food, yeah. Um, <laughs> damn, I'm hungry, though. That's, that's you fucking me up right now. <laughs> me too, um, I'm not going to lie. Underrated? Mm-hmm. I'll be ghetto if I say Jimbo's? No. A while I, 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 I don't know. Jimbo's. I don't think I know. <laughs> <laughs> my, my my old co-host producer Nick Charles and Nick he lives in Harlem so he's taking what? me to a couple of spots I don't remember the names yeah that's so my I, personal I, I, I might have had one of these and just don't remember it yeah Jimbo's but it it, it is some good food yeah Harlem. nah for sure that. nah you could get we get some vibes yeah, like absolutely. we we got Amy Rules Melba there's a couple of joints I could name but like my favorite underrated even though it's some of the Bronx but the chain the mm-hmm. chain of Jimbo's in Harlem Jimbo's okay yeah say less say less yeah. who is the most fire Harlem rapper. You can name yourself if you want. Oh, like. you already know. Oh, baby. Man. <laughs> like, gangster. Shout out to my peers and my 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 peoples. Mm-hmm. Delhi, all to all. You feel what I'm saying? Um, you know, the vibes, Joe West, High Serve, Vina Love. I could go on for days, but mm-hmm. like, yeah, yeah. But I I do think I'm 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 the one. As you should. Yeah. As you should. What is your most fire memory growing up in Harlem? First first fire memory? Yeah. It's a lot. Just being on Linux, I could tell stories for days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just parties. I used to I used to do a lot of parties back then. Um, you were hosting? Yeah, I was hosting. Nice. I used to be in a crew that did a lot of parties. Mm-hmm. 14, 15, 16 years old. So okay. I off the head, I don't got I don't got nothing, no memories for real that I, I just I have a lot. Because it's always lit. Yeah, it's, it's just always, always lit. That's why I said just Linux have. Okay. <laughs> Linux have. Where is the most fireplace to find sour haze, et cetera? Where's the most fireplace? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can find it all over. All all over. Over. Yeah, it's no. like in no particular spot. It's like going to corner. Now, nowadays, shit, wall, should go in the store, mm-hmm. the delis, but you can find it anywhere. Yeah. You know, Not quite literally. Spot. My boy lived on West 140th, and there was like a deli on the corner. Yeah. And anytime I would go to pick up some like hard yeah, cider or something. Gotta pick, you just got to like, you gotta find that yeah. pressure though. Like, yeah. but it's you can find yeah, you can, Nigga just walk up, yo, sour. I'm like, yeah, yo. Yeah. Say less. <laughs> I ain't eight. really a true smoker. Like my I, my my niggas is right here. Yeah. Like, you feel know what I'm saying? I don't gotta go nowhere, but mm-hmm. yeah, you could go anywhere all Okay. Yeah. Say less, say less. All right. Well, time to get into you, man. So first, <clears throat> name Fergie Baby. What's the what's the inspiration behind that? Um, my last name is Ferguson. Ferguson, okay. Yeah. And then Baby came from, you know, first of all, it stuck to me. It's, it's it was sticking. Mm-hmm. And then one of my favorite shows is Baby Kids. <laughs> it's classic. So yeah, classic. so one of my logos when we drafted up, we created a Harlem baby. Yep. So it just it just fit. Mm-hmm. Like I'm and I'm really a baby in real life. Really? Like those are my godparents right there. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I noticed, like, like yo, the patron is silent. Like yeah, take like, a bracelet off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I'm, i act like you know what I'm saying? It's Fergie baby just stuck with me. That's me. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's what Fergie Baby came from. How old are you? 30. 30, okay. So we're, we're close. 30. 29. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. I, I, I couldn't figure it out because black, black don't crack. Like, this nigga could have been 
Yeah. 35, you could have been 22, I don't know. Yeah, I get I like 24, that. 25, man. There you go. Yeah. Hey, keep that skincare, all that. It's yeah, important. Yeah, all important. Water. Important. So important. Fruits. Yeah. Important. Uh, moisturize. Mm-hmm. Wash your face. Egg, all that. Mm-hmm. All that. Absolutely. Shower, yeah. So, of course, born and raised in Harlem. Mm-hmm. What's well, What was it like growing up there? Like, what, what, what was young Fergie Baby doing? Parties. Outside. Parties. Like, this is, like, shit I'm talking about right now, this ain't nothing right now. Like, like it's just not just right now. It's mm-hmm. been me outside before music. Before I knew music was a thing of me being an artist, I was outside. Mm-hmm. Like, O could tell you, too. Like, we he went to Rice High School. I went to Ohio. So, high school, we used to just be outside throwing parties mm-hmm. and a mix with shorties. Like, you know, just doing stuff for the community. All right. Like, we was always community-based, always doing stuff for the people. Mm-hmm. So, as an artist now, I'm so embraced of that because people already know where I came from. Yeah. But even, like, prior to that, like, elementary school oh, elementary type Fergie. School, like, I mean, well, yeah, I was doing basketball. Uh, yeah, basketball. Mm-hmm. I was having in basketball. Um, yeah, just being outside. <laughs> was music always, well, well you said, like, you kind of came to music a little later after throwing right. parties, right? So, like, what, but prior to that, what would you envision yourself doing when you grew up? Mm. Well, I went to school for criminal justice in Penn nice. State. Um, you, you went to where? I went to Penn State. Penn State, nice. So, so. I graduated. Sorry. I graduated from there. Um, How was I heard it was lit over there, Prince. Oh, <laughs> heard it was lit. Oh, dear. <laughs> and like the but other alongside, you know, Penn State one of the like the parties is crazy. Over yeah. there, but alongside that, the network is yeah, crazy absolutely. over there. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but Penn State was good. But I, I don't like truthfully now to answer that question. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I, I, like I studied criminal justice. I wanted to learn the law. I worked in a um a district attorney's office and all that. So mm-hmm. just learning. The system, and you know, as a black man, so I was just going, I was just going with the wind with that. But I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do mm-hmm. um, until after college. Um, I had friends that that rap. I was always around rapper friends, like yeah. like my people with Skeety Gang, Cool Money right here, like so they was doing it seriously. And I used to do it for play, like I used to push more of my means than anything. But it was one time, like we used to just rap around in the studio. People were like, oh, you nice, take this seriously. Like my big bro Wiss. Um, my man Cornell, like not my uh, Cornell and all them niggas, like they was like take this seriously. So they booked me a session one day, mm. and that's when I did my first single, Bleachers. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And from that point on, at that point, I didn't even know still it was a passion or not. It was a hobby, but the people and the energy around it was like, nah, you got something right now. Yeah. So I'm like, right, let me try this shit out. Yeah, no, there's there's power in people seeing things before you can see them for yourself. Sometimes mm-hmm. we don't. Sometimes we might sell ourselves short. Sometimes we might just, we have other interests, but. That... I always say the people around me is what made me what I am what I am today. Mm-hmm. Like, because if it was up to me, music would not be here. You know what I'm saying? So I love music. Mm-hmm. I'm musically inclined. I could listen to music all day. It's a stress reliever. But as far as making it, nah, hell no. Yeah. Now is a passion. Now I, I know my purpose is to make music and just do a bunch of other things, but one of them is making music yeah. and vibe and making the vibes out. That transition to you from throwing parties to hip like to yeah, rapping like that's side, like, side and side. Yeah, that's literally the origin side. of hip hop. You know, we think about like fifteen twenty Sedgwick and how you know like that that legendary party. It's just mm-hmm. like it's interesting that you had that similar journey where you know you went from cur- curating the vibes for the people to putting the vibes out for them. Like, I just thought that was a really exactly. cool Exactly, so cool it was thing. a, that's how I know, it was Destin. Yeah. That's why I always say God is from Harlem. How, how, well, where did that phrase uh, originate from? Um, My man Jeff, for real, he came to Penn State. He a Harlem nigga too, mm-hmm. so he came, he, he was the first one I heard saying shit, me kidding me. <laughs> um, Are you dumb? That's why my tape, my first tape is called Are You Dumb by One. Like, all my lingo came from Jeff, mm-hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I always give homage, so. He had all these phrases. Yeah. And one day he say, oh, yeah, God is from Harlem. What you said? <laughs> I'm taking that. I'm taking that. So, like, that's why all the time, like, if you really pay attention, all oh, my God is from Harlem skits, he mm-hmm. is him. Because mm-hmm. that's just my way of giving back. He's the one that made this a thing. This is yeah. a lifestyle now. So, why I always personally say God is from Harlem, and I really mean that, because out of all, every, every, any place in the world, and first of all, he made me, God made me black. A mm-hmm. black male, a black intelligent that. Amen. man. You know what I'm saying? That's one. Out of all places in the world, why the fuck he led me in Harlem? Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know how powerful that is? So it's like, I really mean that. When I say Harlem is heaven too, it's because it's like, the environment we in, we the trendsetters. We make shit happen. We make shit shake. People mm. look at us for inspiration. 
So it's just like, I mean that for real. Like, yeah. And then you got now, now that we really saying that, screaming that, and believing that, we got people outside of Harlem saying God is more. Mm-hmm. So it's really a powerful statement. And we just going to keep that lifestyle going. Yeah. No, yeah. it's a it's a powerful place. Yeah. Being a, a Jersey resident, every so often in school, mm-hmm. there would be those guys who would grow up in Harlem who would move to Jersey and come to school. And there was just the certain swagger of a nigga who tells you, like, yo, I, I'm, I'm from Harlem. I grew up in Harlem. Yeah. Like, the woman would, would, yeah, would we different. you know, gravitate different. towards them. Like, you, you would have a certain respect for them. You would not fuck with them. But you would also pay attention to their styles. We in the, our own the, world. The lingo. Like, it's... It's so fascinating that it's like you said, this place just holds so much influence, so many legends, and it's still so relevant. Like and it's you know, only fifty blocks, like right? Around fifty blocks, insane, you know insane. So that just should show you, like, we different. Mm-hmm. We probably the smallest, like, little, like I'm gonna say smallest. You feel what I'm saying? Because we are Manhattan at the end of the day, but yeah. Harlem is Harlem. That's my. Ethnicity, you feel what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so your ethnicity. Yeah, so, like, so this is your yeah, religion. Not, I mean, like, shout out, yeah, I love y'all Brooklyn. Bronx, man, yeah. God is from Harlem, man. Like, I, I remember in college, when because I, I used to host like events in college, and you'd always do the roll call. Like, yo, where's New York? And then you'd be like, all right, Brooklyn niggas and yeah, Queens yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and Harlem and all that. And just like, you know, there's like Queens get the money and there's, there's like whatever Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn go crazy. They go yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice, shout out to them too. Yeah, it's just, it's... And then you you like go to Harlem and you experience that culture. You the like the niggas sitting outside on the chairs, you know, Go whether playing, playing spades music, or drinking, smoking, lobby. like and it, and it's cool too. You know, I think there are a lot of preconceived notions about New York and like it being dangerous, but like I I'll be walking through Harlem and like you know, you, you kind of get thrown off by someone saying hi to you. Like, just yeah. just greeting you. Like yeah, it's fun. Like they're like, I feel like y'all are among the more like cool congenial people in, in new york for sure oh uh, man it's like it's like a melting pot too like it's just get everything but harlem is harlem man you mm-hmm. don't get nothing like it like you know brooklyn brooklyn got their own essence over there queens mm-hmm. got their own essence Bro- bronx of course hbo shit but ha- ain't nothing like harlem man yeah. I'd, like people are like how's all how, how's it harlem first of all come with me in the summertime mm-hmm. and just walk down linux with me mm-hmm. or just come with the guys we outside we'll show you everything like yeah. you know so I, I do appreciate where I'm from and just, like, it made me to who I am now. Like, Do you see yourself staying in Harlem forever? Nah. Nah? Nah, but I will own, I'm like like I am now, I'm owning property in uh, Harlem. So I would, I would love to own a brownstone in Harlem. Okay. But as far as, like, it's living, no. Mm-hmm. Nah, I come back when I got to do shit or I just want to taste the air of Harlem real quick. I come to my brownstone. Well, nah, what, what are some it. places you want to live in or, or can see yourself living? Um, Down south. Down south, yeah. Um, I do want to live somewhere uh, outside of U.S., like mm-hmm. Paris or something like that. I have different properties somewhere, so when I come, I got my own shit. Mm-hmm. But my first my first crib, like if I get the bag right now, I'll probably go to Jersey real quick. Okay. Real quick until I get my shit up, get mm-hmm. a nice crib over there. And I'm probably go down south or I got to go to Houston with my man Cool. <laughs> yeah, you already know the fuck. Yeah. I've never been to Houston yet. I, know, I need to go. I've never been. Yeah, never been to Houston. I, I just went to Austin for the first time in April. I was in Dallas a couple nah, weeks ago. Nah, you got to go to Houston. I know, I know. You got to go to Houston. Uh, that's, that's what I've heard. Paid, heard. paid. You, you, you got a girl? No, I don't. All right, go to Houston. <laughs> go to that's you. also what I Go to Houston, Houston bro. You, yeah, if you don't got a girl, blast. go to Houston. You're going to have a blast. We went crazy last time we went for our first time. We know what we did to go next. We know how to move next time, okay? Because we did bad. I ain't going to lie. Say less. You, you got to put me onto the spots. But Oh, yeah, I got you. Um, early on, you talked about how you know you were encouraged to get into music, and then it became a passion. What did, well, what was that moment you acknowledged that you were passionate about music? I ain't going to lie. Keep it all the way stacked when I met Cajun, my okay. producer and slash engineer, and we created, we lived together in, in Washington Heights, and we created All You Done Volume 2. Mm-hmm. And then I had the whole listening party, whole rollout. I think that's when I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. This is, because we bodied that so much, and it was so natural for us. It was like, nah, this is our purpose right here. And I just met Cajun, and like, not too long ago before that, and he moved in with me, and we'll wake up and cook. And then the songs we was making, it was like, I, at that time was my old time of making music. Like, I felt it. It felt good. People perceived it. Like, it was just, it was just a perfect time. Like, mm-hmm. so I think that's when I realized, like, oh, hell yeah, this is it. Mm-hmm. And I feel good. I could be me. Like, when I graduated college and I was doing these jobs in the courtrooms and all that, you couldn't talk the way you wanted to talk. You couldn't dress how you wanted to dress. You mm-hmm. couldn't. 
You had to be there from nine to five, one hour at lunch. I would feel like a robot. I was yeah. low key slavery. Mm -hmm. And I felt like this is the outlet to be me, to express me and people accept that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I just like, I'm a free person. I can't, I, I got fired from three corporate jobs. Mm -hmm. After a while, it's just like, you're not about to tell me how to get up and win a dress and how to talk. Like, yeah. you just not. I could do it for a little bit of time and get a check, but mm -hmm. that's not going to work because yeah. it's not genuine now. Now, yeah, like, now right. it's like, nah, it's over. Yeah. So when I got into music, Pocket, it's just like, oh, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. I don't got to filter nothing for nobody and it's like, I could be me and I'm accepted, mm -hmm. you know? So. What's your what's your process like? Like, like how... How tough are you on yourself in in creating your music and the people you let hear it? The the do you see the validation you might seek from the people you trust? Like, what's that process like before the world gets it? Um, it get it get heavy because mm -hmm. I, I could be an overthinker sometimes, and that's why you have to have a good team and good management, mm -hmm. like like Joe and Siobhan, because I'm quick to be like, eh. Uh, mm. They like, nah, you bugging that shit fire. Mm -hmm. So even cool money. Everybody in this room right now, I send my music to, I send my work to. Mm -hmm. And these are the reasons why I'm here because knowing me, I probably would have never released it or I probably been pushing it back. I probably never been an artist as I am. Yeah. So their word and their opinions is what's affecting me. Like, oh, I'm not bugging. This shit is fire. Or let's just drop this shit. Like, mm -hmm. they got my best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. Like, me being an artist myself, like, I already have my perception and my thoughts. Like hearing my team have their own perceptions and 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 opinions on things help me out incredibly. Like you know, so mm -hmm. I that's that's my process. Like when I ever I create something and I feel what I feel, I send it to them to see what they feel. And if they coincide to what I feel and they and it's it's good for it to roll out, we gonna drop that shit. Have you ever put something out that maybe you really loved but everyone else was mad on, like? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Especially in my early stages when I didn't have the eyes as I have now. Mm -hmm. I dropped a lot of shit that I felt like it was hits or this shit go crazy. Mm -hmm. And this shit... And this shit, and this shit like, they ain't go, they ain't go crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But as far as like, me thinking like I'm dropping something and I feel like this not hitting and this shit went crazy, mm -hmm. this happened recently. So, recently with... with uh... Truies. Perfect transition. Uh, we had Iman here, and he mm. told us there was a whole story behind the cipher, the suits, all that, and how it almost didn't happen. Mm. So, oh yeah, he we, did. We, we, we have been waiting with patiently to hear this story from you. He said, "I'm, I'm gonna let Fergie tell it." And I was like, "We gotta have Fergie here to tell the story." You're here now. Please let us know how this freestyle that took over the internet. Mm. Great video you just dropped. Um, how, how did it come to be and why did it almost not happen? Me. Just me being me, just overthinking. Like, and I was like, so Iman had this play, right? He's dropping out his album called Phases with all of us. Phases on Volume it, 2. Right? With On the Radar out now. Stream shout out, shout out to On the Radar fam. Shout out to Iman. So he did this. He was like, yo, listen, to roll out this tape before my tape drop, I want to do an ill cipher, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go on the radar. We pick beats. We do a beat pack. We pick which one we, we want, and we're going to dress in suits and spit it. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I, it wasn't my play, so it was like, on my side, I'm like, I'm going to do this for the coach. I'm going to do this for the energy. But in the midst of it going along and a date getting closer to the actual freestyle, I'm writing my shit, and I'm not feeling it. Mm -hmm. Wasn't feeling nothing I was writing. And I feel like I was rushing myself because I yeah. know the time is coming. I gotta write something. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm a type of person I don't like. Ha I don't like feeling like I'm half stepping either. Mm -hmm. So, like the day before, I called Joe and Ma. I'm like, nah, I don't think I'm gonna do this shit. And I called a few other people though, but them specifically, I called them like, I don't think I'm gonna do this shit. I'm not prepared. I'm not ready. I'm not confident. And. I'm like, damn. But Joe was like, Iman was like, I, right, I want you to come, but if you feel like that, I understand you, bro. Joe was like, nah. He was like, matter of fact, what, what it was, I recorded it and I sent it to you? Or you asked, yeah. So I was like, yo, I have it, but I'm not comfortable. I got the voicemail. He's like, send it to me. Send it to him. He listened to it. He was like, nah, bro. There's some, something special going to come out of here. Please, you just do it. Just mm -hmm. do it. I don't care how, how long it's going to take. We gonna, we gonna get over it, but just do it. I, trust me, I feel like something special. And Iman was saying the same shit too. Mm -hmm. But he was pushing me the most as far as like, no, we gonna get your suit. We gonna do this, we gonna do that. Or we gonna get this done. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about nothing that you feeling right now. We gonna get this done. So I'm like, me being me, like, I'm not feeling, I'm, not, I'm still not feeling it. I'm still like, nah, but like, 
you know, like that's what your team is here for. They're gonna push you to where you not maybe not believe in yourself. You feel what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. we went to go get the suits. The whole time I'm practicing, like I got it, but now the nerves is kicking in, and mm-hmm. it's me just overthinking mentally. Like I'm not ready for this shit. So now it's time. It's showtime. Everybody spin their shit. Doo, 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 doo. Some people messing up, but when they get to my turn, mess up like 20 times. <laughs> so that's why the take that is, is the take, mm-hmm. I'm locked in. Yeah. Like I'm locked in. You feel what I'm saying? So it, that was just me being focused and it's like, yo, let's get this done. Let's get this done. Let's just get over. And but I still don't understand what I'm doing right now. It's just me writing some shit that I went through or how I felt my experience in life doing Harlem. But it was Joey Ma to really be like, yo, you wrote something special, you don't even know. Yeah. But we didn't know the caliber of it until it dropped. Well, they did. I did. <laughs> so when it dropped, I'm on the phone with Iman, and he like, yo, you know, you, you, your shit going viral right now. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what? I'm going to shit. 20 minutes is like thousands, hundreds of comments. It felt like that. But it just goes to show, like, you need your team, bro. Because yeah. if I ain't had that, I was not doing that. I was super not doing that. And mm-hmm. I ain't believing. Now, that goes to show me and my confidence too because it's like something so simple that I wrote and something so like that I ain't feel, the whole world felt. Mm-hmm. Well, not even say the whole world, but it's getting there. Like, no, I mean, bro, yeah. I, I, I totally mind. I had niggas in, in Detroit hitting me Yeah, like, I got niggas from all over the nation <laughs> hitting me up. Like, yeah. you feel what I'm saying? Just off, anywhere I go now, people stopping me for that freestyle. Like, yeah. it's, making me, it, it may, it's, it's making me to a bigger artist mm-hmm. and to where we playing on this. And it's crazy because my management, my team knew this was gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Like we knew, we didn't know how it was gonna happen, when it was gonna happen, but we knew something like this was gonna happen. And it took something to where I didn't believe or I didn't think it was gonna happen, happen. Yeah. And it's, that's a lot of people's story. They feel like it was about to give up or they wasn't gonna drop. And that that song on that that placement that they didn't feel, that was the one that upped their careers. Yeah. So that's how that happened. But nah, I wasn't jacking that. <laughs> I wasn't jacking that, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, and it's it's, you know, I think, I think a lot of people go on on the radar expecting to blow up, and we see a lot of people go on, and you know they they get, they get the views and all that, but shit don't really happen. But for you to be one of the people who like had that moment where it's like the internet is resonating, even if they're not from Harlem, the storytelling of it, the the depiction, the emotion, all of it, like it, it was like something that I felt. And like, I'm from Englewood, New Jersey, the suburbs, and I'm wow. like, yo. Somehow I understand the shit, <laughs> even if I don't understand it. Like it just, it just made the picture. It made you literally painted. Well, that's what I was saying. I don't even know why I'm writing. I'm joining generations together. Mm-hmm. Like I have the flow of Wu Tang and Busta mm-hmm. and Meth and all of them, but then I'm talking about the 2010 era, mm-hmm. and we in 2024. So I just bridge mad gaps, and that's just me writing. Just like I said, I was just panicking. Like I gotta, I gotta write something down. Let me just write what I went through. Yeah, and it, it just touched so many people because either you went through it or you just saw the picture of New York. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, I was blessed for that, and that just gave me more, I guess, confidence in myself for mm. real. Because it's like, oh y'all like this? Yeah. My next take, Vince bought about the it's Tom's tennis. Mm. Like that's, and I was, and, and this is why it's, it's just like God is from Harlem and just like. Devon Tommy because Chewy BBs and Canes is just like an appetizer of what I'm about to drop. Mm-hmm. And Vince Barter is kind of like, I'm giving an exclusive right now, it's kind of like that times 10 as far as like the son- sonically and the production wise mm-hmm. of the the inspirations from like Wu-Tang, Busta Rhymes, Ludacris, Missy Elliott, um, Eminem, with Pharrell. Mm-hmm. So it was crazy and it's like, the people is now telling me what they want and it's like, damn, we already working on this. <laughs> For the force, like you know, like, yeah. it's just crazy. The alarming was crazy with that. Yeah. How, how long did it take to write that? No, it took it. It took it took a couple of days, like two mm-hmm. three days. But the same time, too, you had to memorize it. Yeah. Right. You know, so that was another task of my like. It's like damn, like I, I got the I got the shit written, but I don't even remember this shit. Yeah. So that's why it took me so many tries to really get this shit going. Mm-hmm. But when it when it's all said and done, like once I did it, people already knew it was like, oh, this is up. Mm-hmm. Like, but I still didn't feel it until it actually dropped and I see the to see the people perceive like 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 take in heat in, in the shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah. No, it it became a moment. I, I love that y'all quickly followed it up with the Spotify, like the the acapella version, the on the radar version. See, that the, wasn't the other none of this was my idea. <laughs> Nothing that happened was my idea. The the cipher, Iman. Mm-hmm. The single, Gabe, on mm-hmm. the radar. The video, fifth half. Mm-hmm. Everybody was like, nah, here. Mm-hmm. Red carpet, and I just <laughs> ex- me and my team just executed that. But yeah. 
it, that's why I said the alignment was crazy because this was a side mission that turned into a main mission. Mm -hmm. And it, it's crazy because this is going to align to what we working on already. Yeah. So. Vince, Vince Barter, you said. Yeah, something like that. Because <laughs> we changed we we changed it. But yeah, y'all going to get like a Vince Barter mm -hmm. and you're going to understand later on what is Vince Barter, mm -hmm. who is Vince Barter compared to Fergie, baby. Do you have a, do you have like a projected drop date for that? Quarter two. 2025. Two, okay. Quarter two, 2025. Okay. Projected. Okay. <laughs> Quarter three, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Looking uh, forward to it. Um, right. Do you have an idea of some people that you may want on the project? A lot of people. A lot of people. I don't want to jinx it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pray on it and manifest that. There we go. Because I'm working on some shit right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I've, throughout the time I've been listening to you, I've enjoyed that you, you know, people use the phrase restoring the feeling. Yeah. And you definitely have that old school rap DNA within you, but then you also make it palpable to today. You know, you can hear a Truies, BBs, and Canes in 2024 and enjoy that. I could hear you on a Can't Get Rid of Me with, you know, HD Ben Dope and enjoy that. Shout out to the guys. Like, you're very versatile. Like, is, 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 that, is, that, is that like something that you have, like, made yourself be or is it you like you just jump on whatever you feel and just like like is it intentional to be so nah, it's just malleable me. it's just, just me like growing up i used to listen to different shit like mm -hmm. of hip-hop though like mm -hmm. like i said the names of buster 50 wayne yeah so and i was always good at lip singing people's shit mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so that developed my flow that developed my delivery. Like, listen to Busta, and I'm the type of dude to catch every word. Like, I'm nice at that. <laughs> so when it was time for me to write, I, yeah. could, I could hit different pockets because I was already trained rapping they shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's easy for me, and I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I don't want to be just tapped into one box. Like, music is a whole thing. It's a whole spectrum of music. Hip-hop just one genre. I would want to dip into the Latin. I want to dip into the pop, mm -hmm. reggae, whatever the case may be. So it's like, yeah, I'm... That's just me. Mm -hmm. Whatever I feel, whatever I feel confident in, whatever it speaks to my soul on the production side, that's what's going to come out. You was one of them kids who memorized Buster's verse on Look yes. At Me Now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, not that no, one. That was tough. That like, was like, like hand, hands, um, what's that? I'm just smack right there. Hands with my eyes can see. Yeah, like, yeah. That, I knew that. I knew most of that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Ludacris shit, like mm -hmm. fantasy. Yeah. Like, those are my shit. So when I was, like, when I implement that into my style, it was easy for me to to touch in that and touch in that environment. Like yeah. I could do the Wu Tang, I could do this. Like you heard the Method Man in the freestyle, you heard yes. ODB in the freestyle. Like I could get that, and that just make me more of a powerful weapon when when the time does come. Mm -hmm. So where anybody in any genre could come to me and do a song. So I think I think it'd probably be easy to say like, Truies, BBs, and Canes. The moment of it, the video, the the, the virality is has been like. If maybe someone from the outside looking at it would be like, oh, that's like his biggest or his favorite moment. What's been your like most gratifying moment throughout this journey? Because again, I've been listening to you for several years. Moments. Like it's 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 been it's, it's been some time that I've been hip to you. So like what's been what's what's like that the most gratifying thing? Like something like if if you were like filling out a fucking questionnaire and someone was like, Hey, what's what's your what's been your favorite moment throughout your rap career? Gosh, I got a lot, bro. Damn, I don't know. Um, I would say just gratifying, mm -hmm. like yeah, starting this shit, the first starting. session, mm -hmm. bleaches. I think that's what kind of set the tone. But as far as like recently, Truies, yeah, I think now was like the highest point right now in my in my career. Mm -hmm. That and it's still going, so yeah. it's, I, I still it still feels surreal. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's I would say the first session to. Of bleachers, and then now, and it's crazy how I'm saying the start and now. Like, yeah, it's just those two moments is 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 a, it's, a, it's essential for me. Like, yeah, you know? and obviously it's gonna be way more moments. This is we just scratching the surface now. But mm -hmm. was there anyone that, who like commented or reshared or you know showed you love that you were like, oh shit, like this person saw it? Definitely Swiss, Swiss Rhapsody. ASAP Ferg, mm. um, uh, Rome Streets, mm. Graf. It's a couple. I ain't gonna lie, they coming. Mm -hmm. they, they pulling up. Um, Joels, even brands like BB Simons, Vincent, 
Yeah, like all from that video, that's, I'm getting a lot of cosigns now. That's hard. And I'm getting cosigns from real rights too, like yeah. people that cemented in the game or in the game now, but there's like, like they got their shit going, like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I'm just grateful of that. Yeah. Yeah. Have there been, and I think it's, uh, as a, as creators, we just naturally have moments of insecurity. You kind of touched on it earlier, but have there been, have there been moments where you've been grinding, putting music out, getting good, yeah. getting good reception from it, but like, you're like, why am I not at the level that maybe I, I think I should? That's sh- what we talk about. <laughs> yeah. Before Truies, that mm-hmm. was always the like, what the fuck is going on? Right. We putting out heat. We we lit in the towns. We doing this. We doing that a third. We checking all the boxes on the on the board. Mm-hmm. Why is nothing hitting? Why is nothing sticking? Mm-hmm. It's like I got timing, bro. That's what I know now. Like, and we always we never had a doubt to where we not gonna be lit. We right. the ones like. Like nobody telling us nothing. Like the people I'm around and and myself, we just dumb. It's just the timing of everything. And this time it was like this year was my time, and mm-hmm. it's going to continue being my time. But yeah. it was a very frustrating moment to where it's like, what 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 is what what do they want? What do they want now? Mm-hmm. Like we doing everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We sound good. We look good. We 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 a unit. We we doing shit together. Like yeah. we making noise in the towns. Niggas know our names. What what's gonna take us to the next level? Yeah, and then something by accident happened. <laughs> like that. It's always when you least expect. It. Yeah. yeah, my mom used to always say that. My mom's like one of my number one supporters, and mm-hmm. she always said, "Why should it be something that you least expect?" Mm-hmm. She always said that, and that's exactly what happened. Mom's no best. Yeah, man. mom's no best. <laughs> yeah. How, how do you balance? Because you, you're very community oriented, yeah. very people oriented. Like I feel like you just walk in a room and get along with anyone. Yeah. How do you balance that ele- element of yourself, <clears throat> element of yourself that considers everyone, but also making the type of music that you want to make and you want to feel, especially if the people might want different stuff. Like nowadays, like sexy drill is is you know shout out to them. the the thing right now. Shout out to them and shout out to them for that. Obviously, that's one section of new york there's still the traditional rap there's still the violent drill there's there's still you know there's a bunch of different stuff so how, how do you kind of balance recognizing what the trends are what the people want staying true to yourself but also maybe even dabbling into into that stuff it's time i mean like i said you just said it though just staying true to yourself mm-hmm. um just the balance of it um because there's a lot of people it's a lot of artists like you could double and dabble right mm-hmm but there's a lot of people that's dibbling and dabbling that's cool and going back to their sound, but there's a lot of people that's switching their whole sound to sexy drill or whatever is trendy. Yeah. And that's what I don't, I don't, I don't get and I don't kind of condone because it's like, y'all going off the trend. You're yeah. not sticking off your authentic, like being authentic and just being you. And, and I think that's what helped me get through this shit because all these trends that pass through, which is the regular drill, the, you know, the regular drill and then the sexy drill, I ain't hop on none of that. I yeah. stayed true to myself. And then that's why, like, you know, everything repeats itself or everything is a trend. Everything has a cycle. Now it's going back to the real essence of hip hop, the real times where we grew up on. People want to hear real rap and real music now. So you just got to stay on your ground and just believe in who you are and just believe what type of artist you are, too. Yeah. But I do, I do, like, if you want to, if you're going to dibble and dabble, it got to make sense, too. Right. Because if, if, I, if I go into Sexy Drill, like, say if I do a song with Sexy Drill, I would want to do it with one of them, mm-hmm. like you know what I'm saying, so it can make sense. Or if it is like, I do that one song by myself, and if it's a hit, if the people likes it, like it, then I do that. But I'm going back to my vibe. Mm-hmm. I'm not standing on this. It's not my vibe. Yeah, it's not my energy. So I think that's why I'm also getting praised right now because I got my own lane. I've been on my own two, on my own ten since I started my music. You know what I'm saying, I ain't all these trends happen. I ain't go over this yet. I've been on my pocket, so. I think it's important. Yeah. I think it's important. Also, too, you could double and dabble. That's how collaborations happen. Absolutely. And a lot of beautiful things come out of that. Like, you just got to know yourself, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I, that's what I just say. I see a lot of artists switching their whole sound because it's hot. Yeah. And it's that not working for them. You feel what I'm saying? So, you just, it got to make sense. Mm-hmm. Let's, just, let's just say that. It got to make sense for you and what's going on. Yeah. Or, I got to hear the story behind It's Niki. I, 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 just, I just listened the other day. I was like, yo, man, this it's... It's not like, an accident. It, it's equal. It's like equally a good song, but it's also fucking hilarious. <laughs> and that's that's the best kind of stuff. Is like stuff that makes you laugh, but also like yo, like I, I could bop to this. Like yeah, yeah. When, when I see you as a classic, so you hear those notes and you just like it, like triggers that nostalgia. But then the story, the story you're telling, it's like 
I can't believe someone repurposed this and, <laughs> and made it work for us. Like, I love it. What's the story behind it's it? for the tales, man. I was living with my moms. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I used to record in the living room. And I was bored one day. And when, when I see it was my shit. Classic. I ain't gonna lie my shit. So Classic. I'm like, yo, I wanna, let, me, let me do some shit. Mm -hmm. And I just did it myself. And I'm like... Oh, this shit funny as hell. <laughs> I was talking about, that was my first interact. Like, yo, this shit mad funny, but I feel like, mm -hmm. like everything I said, that's what I do and that's what I feel. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Butter spot, waking up, going on Linux, drinking Henny and all that. So I posted on a gram, but like, just posting on a gram, regular shit. That shit went crazy. No, it, it caught on. It caught on that crazy. Shit crazy, yo. No, but like, yeah, that was a time too. That was a mm -hmm. time too. But that was, that was by accident. Mm -hmm. That was just me being stupid in a house board. Hey, man. Yeah. So shout out to that moment of stupidity then. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes that work, man. When you, <laughs> and that's what goes to, uh, I want to bring a point, like, when you start taking this shit as a job, mm. or when you get too serious in it, it takes the, the element and the essence out of this shit. So you got to have fun with this shit, man. Yeah. And don't care about what people think or what, what they want to hear because you're never going to satisfy yourself and what you want to make. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say sometimes... You gotta have a record to where it's like you're not even spending no real shit. Mm -hmm. like, no, not not saying the real shit. Real balls, like right. punch balls. Have fun. Speak yeah. your shit. Speak your speak what you go through, but have fun with it. Let people feel that like and relate to it and laugh to it. Mm -hmm. Like you notice when you when you listen to a song, right? And it's fire, but it's funny. You like it even mm -hmm. more because yeah. it's funny. It's, even more it's fire, yeah. but yo, this nigga's stupid. Yeah. But so that's 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 what came with that. Like. Yo, this is fun. How you spend a week when I see you record until a New York <laughs> anthem and he's it's funny, but he's speaking real shit. Yeah. So that's I'm that's, what, that's why. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we live outside. <laughs> real shit. Classic, classic. Um being a creator who loves what you do and being in that grind mode, you know, steady climbing. How important is it and how often do you give yourself time to just step away? from creating i need to learn because mm. i'm always ripping and running they tell me that all the time too mm -hmm. like you gotta don't burn yourself out yeah and i, I it, you could get burned out quickly mm -hmm. just like outside of just creating music just being outside and networking yeah with, with networking and being outside and making music that can easily burn you out so i i like my days that i'm not doing nothing i'm in the house chilling with my girl mm -hmm. chilling like i take those days important yeah i answer the phone sometimes but i might not even write Mm -hmm. Like oh I might not, I'm not going nowhere like I'm in a crib but I I take those days even though there's it's light now like I don't I don't really have them days but when I do have them days I'm in a crib mm -hmm. so that's it's, that's ve that mental is very important to not burn out because now you have a writer's block or mm -hmm. now you being less creative in what you do um you feel me and that's why like also my creative director and fashion designer right here Ori like when I'm Burnt out of ideas, he's right there. And we just on the phone for two, three hours from 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. Like, just talking about rollouts, fashion, mm -hmm. music, and that he helps me a lot with that. So, and also it's my management. But this is my creative, as far as, like, treatments, rollouts, branding, everything, he's the guy. So yeah. that also goes back to your team, too, because they're going to have different shit to bring to the table, mm -hmm. you know, when you burnt out. Yeah. Yeah. I know you fuck with anime. I, I remember the anime re re uh, reference in Truis BB's. Sexy four bullets like Neji within my ring, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Um, well, well, what are some of your favorite animes? Of course, Naruto. Naruto, okay. Dragon Ball Z. I'm not a real big anime. Um, right. Anime. Oh, yo, you know what I started writing? My Hero Academia. I've heard great things about Pain. Great I ain't things. gonna lie, Pain. <laughs> I ain't finished yet, but yo, fire. Mm -hmm. I started watching Demon Slayer. Uh, mm -hmm. But... Yeah, I would say for the to, predominantly like Dragon Ball Z and Naruto, Boruto, mm -hmm. Shippuden, and all that. Other than that, nah, I'm not into heavy in the anime like that. What are some other things you do outside of music? Play ball. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to get back to playing ball. Um, outside. <laughs> outside, <laughs> chilling. Like, nah, but like on a, on a real. On a real, like, yeah, on a stressful, like, stressful lever base, like, mm -hmm. basketball, listening mm -hmm. to other people's music, yeah. listening to my music, if I'm not writing it, or just chilling with my boys, they real, they like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just chilling with them, talking, and just being outside with them, that that takes my mind off a lot of shit. Yeah. So, yeah, it's that. You play any video games, too? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, based on my schedule, it's been lately, I haven't, mm -hmm. uh, like, but one of my favorite games, you play Days Gone? No, I haven't. 
I have not. Never heard of it yet? I haven't. Open no, I world. Haven't the, I think it is the first open world zombie game. Okay. Pain. Okay. Pain. Um, Last of Us 2. I've heard great things. Great things. NBA 2K, of course. Of course. Classic. You know, regular shit, Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. But I, as of lately, you know, we on artist mode. I haven't been playing like that. Right. You so, have any uh, dream collabs? Yeah, I have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you give me like three. And why? Of course. I... All right, that makes sense. Let me say that makes sense. Of course, I want to do something with Kendrick. Mm-hmm. That's my old time. That's my favorite. All right. So, a dream collab is definitely Big X to plug right now. Okay. I think we will go stupid. I ain't gonna lie. And I want to do a song with Glorilla. Glorilla? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, that's just right now. Like, if you want to talk about old time, that's a whole the conversation. But right now, I want to do a song, like, just giving you three. I want to do Big X, Kendrick, and Glow. I like yeah. That. I like that. The diverse, different answers. Yeah, different yeah, Different answers. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people would give you I want to fuck the... with Schoolboy 2. Okay. Honorable mention. Schoolboy okay. Q is crazy. I fuck yeah. with that. I fuck with that. Well, ultimately, and I, I feel like I know what your answer is going to be to this, based, like, you've had a couple themes throughout the conversation, but, like, ultimately, when it's all said and done, what do you want people to remember Fergie Baby for? Authentic. Be, be, me being me and authentic. Um, the sound I provided. Um, the energy I provided outside of music, and you know, I, I just, I just want people to look at me like I don't even say a music icon, just an icon, bro. Like I, like I said, outside of music, right now, music is just a, a forefront to what we want to do. Like we want to do so much things, and I just want to just be looked at as a figure, mm-hmm. an inspirational figure for the kids, for the youth, for even for people even older than me. You know, like he did that right. He did what he's supposed to do. Yeah. And as as an artist and as a as a human being, you know. Um, and just great energy, man. I, I chill with great energy people. Yeah, like, I just want to, yo, Fergie Baby was the one. Mm-hmm. Man, you feel what I'm saying? So I want my own mural in Harlem. I want my own street <laughs> in Harlem. Well, it's bigger than Harlem, though. So I just want to be looked at as a world as, like, Fergie Baby is going down in history, mm-hmm. you know? So we have Vince Barter 2, you said, coming yeah. in next year. Vince Barter. Vince Barter, no, I'm so sorry. Yeah, Vince the Barter. single came out, but Vince Barter coming out next year. Vince Barter I, next my year. tape. Uh, my EP dropping next week. Oh, really? Yeah. EP next week. I uh, know, but nobody really know. You just got the exclusive. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Fergie Baby EP dropping next week. Yeah, next week. Next week. <laughs> um, you said you, you y'all want to do some other things, like you know, uh, with obviously with the kids community, like being a a rapper. It, there's a natural transition into like fashion and acting For and all sure. that. Like, are those those things you'd want to do too? Hell yeah, I'm super fashion though. Mm-hmm. Super. Like, I just had I had a couple of. Photo shoots, um, fittings, uh, fashion shows this whole week, like, mm-hmm. and that's that's kind of like what I'm trying to go into. Especially my 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 bro being a fashion designer, we trying to attack that. As far as we got the music side, but we trying to hit the brand endorsements, the brand partnerships, yeah, um, in that nature. So I definitely going to cross over into that, like, cause it goes hands in hand too, like you know. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm building relationships as far as like you know my guy Fly over in Vincent. BB's, uh, my girl Liz over in True Religion. Um, there's so many brands that I'm trying to build with. BBC, um, my man Deli over there. So you know what I'm saying? We got full play, my man Ori over here. So we trying to bring that into one world and you may make it make sense. Mm. You know? Love that. Uh, the last question, I always love to ask artists this when they come by. You know those like Apple Music playlists where it's like this person's, uh, what's the, what is it? Uh, like their uh, traditional songs or their, uh, what's the word? what the fuck is the word? I'm struggling to think of it. Whatever. If you had to pick five songs that people would like, like five songs to get to know Fergie Baby. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, they for be- sure. For sure, True Babies and Cans. True Babies and Cans, sure. of course. Um, two Suburbans. Two Suburbans. Um, three Beneficial. Okay. Um, four Bleaches. Bleaches. Five. Very first one. <laughs> five will probably be damn. Nikki. Nikki, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Nikki, honorable mention, Steve O. Steve O and Freak. Yeah. Okay. Well, Billy B. Shout out to her. But yeah, Beneficial it. definitely is my top five. All right. Because that's really my bot before I was caught. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Well, my guy, great to finally have you come through. This is amazing. Um, Thank you. Hope y'all learned something. Got to know this incredibly charismatic dude who I see great. He's doing great things already. But I've from the moment I met him and heard his music, 
I knew great things were coming. So it's cool to see it, it play out yes, um, in you. this way. It's cool to see people like naturally, gra- like the natural gravitation people have towards you. I remember Kojo tweeted like a year ago, like Fergie baby has this star power. And I, I noticed it too. Like even beyond the music, just like I said, you, you, you're in a room and people just talking to you, like the way you engage with people, the, the, the you're entertaining, but you're also like, listen well you speak well all that like it's it, it's it's all of the characteristics of that. someone who's going to be successful so it, it's love. cool Thank to you. it's cool to uh, you know experience it in this in this way as we you know we were trying to make it happen for so much long love. so um yeah here we Not are so time. Thank you for finally and this is perfect time too I've been wanting to come on this platform hey man but it's, it's like look Chewy BBs is out EP dropping next week mm-hmm. And you doing your thing, so this is, it, this, is, this is great timing. Once again, my brother, thank you so thank much you, thank for you. coming through. Much love, much, much success love. to you. Thank you. Oh, my God. Let me reach you. Here we go. Uh, Mr. B's and Will, we missed y'all, but they will be back um, very soon. Um, and, of course, y'all can uh, subscribe, as always. Put your friends on. But most importantly, stay safe, stay humble, stay busy, and stay outside. Words of Fergie, baby. Ha. <sighs>